Hey there, this is Todd with Industrial Comfort, and today we have a home improvement project where I'm going to show you how to add new sprinkler heads to an existing irrigation system. So there are three critical things we need to cover before we get started. The first of which is, does your system even have the capacity for more heads? The second, I'm going to go over what the anatomy of a sprinkler system looks like below ground so you know what you're looking for. And then number three, we'll cover the tools and components necessary to make this a successful project. So when we look at the throughput of your system, your lawn is broken down into separate zones. So you can't water your entire lawn at once, which is why sprinkler systems are designed around zones. So your, lo your lawn will be broken into separate zones. Each zone will have the capacity to carry a specific number of sprinkler heads based on the throughput of the system. And the throughput is measured by GPM, or gallons per minute. So most of you probably don't know how many gallons per minute your system will carry. So I'm going to show you, or rather tell you, how you can find that out. So where your irrigation lines come out of the house, there's going to be a spigot. And you're going to want to take a five gallon bucket and use that spigot to fill the bucket. Now why I say that spigot specifically is because supply lines that feed your irrigation system are going to be bigger than the supply lines that, that feed your other spigots. So you're going to measure the amount of time it takes to fill that bucket. So for ease of this example, I'm going to use 30 seconds. So let's say it takes 30 seconds to fill your five gallon bucket. You divide the 30 seconds by five, which is the number of gallons, and you have six seconds per gallon. You then want to take 60 seconds, which obviously represents one minute, and divide by six, which is the amount of seconds it takes to fill one gallon that will give you 10, which means that your system has the capacity to deliver 10 gallons per minute, okay? Then what you're gonna to wanna to do is go to the manufacturer's website of the particular head that you're looking to install and identify what volume the head supports. So for this example, let's say that this manufacturer supports one gallon per minute. We take the 10 gallon per minute capacity that your zone has and divide by one. And that means that you have the capacity to handle 10 heads on that zone. And I'll go ahead and put this in the description as well so you don't need to take notes. So um, you'll also see um, in the manufacturer specifications they talk about PSI, which is pounds per square inch. Um, and there's generally a chart based on GPM against PSI. Um, there is no direct correlation between GPM and PSI because they're measured differently. Therefore, you're going to want to assume that most systems handle 30 PSI. The next thing I'm going to talk about is the anatomy of the sprinkler system below ground. So the sprinkler system is comprised of your main line, which is generally an inch in diameter, and this main pipe will branch off and feed your heads by way of these funny pipes. Um, not exactly sure why, why they're called that, but that's what they're called. And so when you're looking to tap your main line to add more heads, what you're gonna wanna do is find the head that's closest to the area where you wanna add your incremental heads and trace the line back to the main line. And this is the line that will tap for more heads, as you'll see in the video. So finally, I want to go ahead and talk about the tools and components you need. Uh, first and foremost, you will need a pipe cutter. Uh, this is essential. It makes your life quite easy, as opposed to trying to use a knife or a, a razor or something like that. Um, the next thing you'll want is a crimper. So when you go to make these attachments, you're gonna to wanna to use one of these crimp fittings. So you're gonna slide the pipe onto the barb fittings on these adapters, and then you use the crimper to put it all in place. Now finally, you want a torch as well. So it's always nice to have a torch to soften up this plastic to make it more malleable as you slide it over the barb fitting on this adapter. Um, and speaking of adapters, You'll also want a number of adapters based on the configuration that you're looking for. And so, you know, in this particular example, we have an adapter that will allow you to tap a half inch piece of funny pipe into your one inch main line. Now, there are a ton of different manufacturers out there that make their own adapters, they're numbered different sizes, and so on and so forth. So it will really come down to um, the manufacturer of the head that you use, 
the size of the inlet, which is generally about three quarters of an inch. Uh, funny pipe, for the most part, is standard at half inch. Um, some supply lines are bigger or smaller than the inch. So now that I've covered sort of the, the critical elements to the project in terms of capacity, um, the tools required, and then what the, what the actual system looks like underground, let's go ahead and get started. This is the furthest head to the area in which we're gonna put the new heads. And I trace the funny pipe down here, and I'll, I'll get a close up of this, which ties into the main line, which I'll show you as well. So this is the junction that I mentioned before. You can see this yellow plastic tap adapter that connects your half inch funny pipe to your one inch mainline pipe. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this piece out so that I can then tie in the new one inch pipe down to the bottom of the yard. So I'm gonna put a T in so that I can continue to run the main line and I'm just gonna connect the funny pipe right here to this bar. Now we're ready to put on our T. So what I'm gonna do is slide this crimp fitting over the pipe like this and I have a blowtorch like this and this is used to get this soft so that you can slide this one inch adapter into the pipe. Now you don't need to apply that much heat. You don't want to melt this thing. Just a quick... Just like that. And then I'm going to go ahead and get this thing crimped. And I'll leave in the description some links uh, to help you find these tools. Because the existing funny pipe was a little too short to tie into the T from the existing head, I'm just gonna go ahead and remove the old pipe and we'll put some new funny pipe on. Okay, now we'll bury this back up and then run the pipe to the new T. Sorry the light's not great here, but we've got the existing head tied into the T. Now we're ready to run the main line. But first, I'm going to go ahead and dig the trench that will lead us back to the area over here. I'm not sure you can see right over there that flag. And then we've got the other flag sort of over there. So I'll dig the trench and then we'll finish the work. Okay, so we've got the main trench line dug behind me here. We're gonna go ahead and connect the main line to this T. I'll show you how that's done. We're gonna connect it to the other T and then use the funny pipe to connect up the extra heads. Okay, same procedure as before. We're gonna go ahead and put this clamp over the pipe and I hope you guys can see okay with the shadow. We're then gonna slide this over, rock it back and forth to seat it. And we'll go ahead and use this crimping tool. To go ahead and crimp it in place. So again, we're gonna go ahead and bury this line as we go along just to keep it down because it, again, it wasn't a coil and it is kind of a little out of control. Um, I did forget to mention earlier that you wanna get this down a minimum of four inches to avoid any of the equipment or machinery that's gonna be used during aeration. Okay, so we're going to put the T right here. And we'll go ahead and just clip the pipe. And we'll put the T on. Next, we are going to fit a section of funny pipe to this head. And we'll place it right here. Hey, 
we're then going to go ahead and put on this funny pipe adapter like this and then we'll get a section of one inch pipe to connect these two Okay, the final step of this project will be to connect the final head uh, and connect it to the main line. So you want to leave as uh, sort of the shortest length of funny pipe possible um, because this funny pipe creates friction in the tube. So we're going to go ahead and connect it up and then get as short a length as possible going here. Now that the project's over, the light's finally good. You're probably wondering, why aren't I running the irrigation system? Well, we blew out the lines earlier today, so I'm gonna have to adjust this thing in the spring. I do hope you found it helpful. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. Thanks.